No, in general, it is difficult to find the exact sum of a series. In fact, most of the time, we'll be able to determine whether or not it converges or diverges and still won't know what it converges to if it converges. But we can determine whether or not it converges without finding the actual sum. Like that last example that we just did, we found the sum, and thus we knew it converged. Most of the time, we'll find out whether or not it converges, and we still won't know what it converges to. But we can estimate the value of the series sometimes numerically. And the easiest way to estimate the value of the series is just to take a lot of terms and see what the value is. So look at this series right here. I want us to think about n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, okay, which is 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared, and so on, right, plus all the way out to 1 over n squared, and then you just keep going. In this case, it turns out there's no simple formula for the sum of the first n terms. So what we did, or what I've already done for you, is I've used a computer to generate the approximate values. I said in the margin, but actually what I'm referring to is this table right here. This suggests that the partial sums look like they're approaching something in the vicinity of 1.64, right? Because what I did was I took the first five terms, like this right here, that's S sub 5. If I add those up in my calculator, I get 1.4636. If I did 10 terms, using a calculator or using Excel or maybe even using a, a, a coding language like MATLAB or, or, or Java, I can do this quickly in the computer, I get 1.5498. If I did 50 terms, which would be absurd to do by hand, but a computer can do it like that, 1.6251. If I did the first 100 terms, I got 1.6350. And then 500 terms, 1,000 terms, 5,000 terms. Notice how each time I'm, I'm multiplying this by like 500 and I, I only go up a tiny little bit. Each time I go up by a significant number of ends, I'm still only getting a little bit bigger. So it looks like this thing is approaching something around 1.64. So how will we know for sure that this thing doesn't just keep getting bigger forever? Well, one way is to consider the function y equals 1 over x squared, which I've plotted on the graph below. This curve right here is the curve 1 over x squared. And the boxes represent an area corresponding to the sum, right? Notice here's 1 over 1 squared, 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 4 squared, 1 over 5 squared, and so on. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, and I'll do this in, in red on here. I'm going to draw a line right there. And I want you to think about the integral. Actually, I'm going to even write in the box. The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Notice how that's this area completely underneath the curve, but includes all of this excess area that's between the boxes and the curve, right? You see that? The question is, how is the original sum, 1 over x, 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared, correspond or relate to this guy? Notice how 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over... 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared plus dot, dot, dot. This stuff right here, everything inside there is less than the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. You see that? because of all this extra area, right? 
this stuff in here that I've got in green, that, that, this little sliver right there, all of the green means that the integral is bigger than the sum after the first term. So here's my claim. All of this to say that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is going to be less than <coughs> 1 over 1 squared plus the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Okay, so here's my, here's my conclusion from that. If the integral converges, so does the series. Since it's bigger, if it doesn't go to infinity, if it goes to a finite number, then the series also has to go to a finite number. So in this case, the series will behave like the integral. Okay. All right, so the next example. Consider this series right here, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n. Instead of 1 over n squared, let's look at a different series. Let's look at 1 over the square root of n. So 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 3 and so on. <clears throat> so I did the same thing with the table. And I plugged in the first five terms and added them up. So I added up these together. Those five terms would be S sub 5. I get 3.2317. If I added up the first 10 terms, I got 5.0210. Now look at what's happening as I go down. It looks like it's getting bigger and bigger. Now you don't know that for sure until we prove it mathematically. It looks like, and we would hypothesize, that it's getting bigger. But this may eventually just get really close to 200 and never go past 200. I don't know by just testing values. So what I've got to do is check mathematically. So let's consider, similarly, the function y equals 1 over the square root of x. And my question is, again, how does that relate to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x dx? There's not underneath, but now there is above, right? Which means that the sum is now bigger than the integral, right? So with this extra red up here, I can see that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n is actually going to be, that's the boxes, right? The areas of the boxes is this guy. That's bigger than the integral starting here at 1 and going that direction from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x dx. Now, if this integral right here diverges, and I say diverges because it's underneath, if it's always smaller than the sum, but the thing smaller than it goes to infinity, then the sum also has to diverge. And so does the series. And I use these two examples because it turns out the one I did on the first page, this guy up here, this integral converges and we can do it we've done improper integrals before if we check this integral it does converge this one down here actually diverges this improper integral right here goes to infinity 
I'll actually do some of those um, a little bit later whenever we come back at 11. But the point of all this leads us to what's called the integral test, which that's this last statement right here, the integral test. Here's how the integral test works. We're going to say that under certain cases, in certain types of series, the series will behave just like the integral does. So if I can find that integral and find out if it converges or diverges, then the series will do the same thing. Now, what's the condition? All right, so let's read this carefully together. F has to be continuous, positive, and decreasing. Okay, positive means all the terms have to be positive for the integral test to apply. Okay, continuous just means that it's defined everywhere, and it's it's we're not really going to run into cases where it's not continuous in this class, but you can see that we need to have something that we can integrate in order to apply the integral test. The other key thing is that it's decreasing. Notice all of these functions that I've given you, the two examples, it's going downhill from left to right. <coughs> doesn't bounce up and down, doesn't ever go back up, it's always going downhill. So in order to apply the integral test, we have to have positive, continuous, decreasing function. But here's the key, if, it's the, if the integral converges then the series converges. If the integral diverges, then the series diverges. The integral and the series behave the same way under those conditions. And just recall, I'm going to write this at the bottom and then we'll dismiss and come back at 11. The integral from 1 to infinity of some function of x dx, remember we learned how to find those by doing the limit as some t goes to infinity, the integral from 1 to t of f of x dx. So we have to find the integral of the function, plug in the limits, 1 to t, and then take the limit as t goes to infinity. That's how we find improper integrals. So the very next thing we're going to do is apply that to an example like this. Okay test that series for convergence.